Good morning, it's David Schlothauer with a tropical update on Super Typhoon Mawar for Wednesday morning, May 24th. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone, and making those decisions regarding Mawar, consult the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and your local officials for the best information for where you are. So this is going to be a very brief update on Super Typhoon Mawar as it gets towards Guam. This is a look at the latest IR satellite imagery, and as we can see, cloud tops have cooled significantly since yesterday still negative 80 to negative 85 celsius which indicates that moar's eye wall is pretty strong right now but as you know in the last few frames here we can start seeing a lot of banding futures with this convection which usually indicate that we are probably going to begin or already have begun an eye wall replacement cycle another way on helping hurricanes fall apart a little bit but once the eye wall replacement cycle completes uh, Mawar is likely to re-intensify very significantly once again on the other side. So this look at the latest water vapor imagery and we can see the environment that Mawar is in. We have very light winds, a nice outflow shield in all quadrants. However, it is a little restricted on the northeastern side, likely due to a little bit, just a hair of shear that's coming in out of the northeasterly direction. But that shear is going to likely abate here within the next 12 to 24 hours. And once that happens and this gets past Guam, the system uh, uh, or the waters out ahead of Moar are very warm for further intensification running in the mid to upper 80s for this time of the year. And that's going to allow Mawar to really intensify or re-strengthen or further strengthen. If it hasn't already, we can see that it is currently um, at 140 knots uh, with pressure at 923 millibars. Okay, so that is pretty low. We have winds that are category 5 force. That's 160 miles an hour, so enough to really cause um full devastation on the island of guam itself and that will arrive by later this morning into the early afternoon hours the center temp has cooled a little bit thanks to again of the um eye appearance now i did want to show you all i did not capture it earlier but here's a look at mark missenbaum once again looking at the eye like structure um, again, this is uh, very close or getting dangerously close to the main island here of Guam. There's Capitol Hill to the north, west, east of it. What we're looking for is an eye wall replacement cycle. And as we can see here in the last uh, 6 to 12 hours, um, as it stands right now, uh, Mawar is a very violent super typhoon right now that will do considerable damage to the big island there of uh, of Guam within the next 12 hours or so is what we think might happen here when it makes landfall with very heavy rainfall definitely typhoon force winds here typhoon warnings are issued we are looking at flooding we're looking at storm surge flooding mudslides debris flows significant flooding here this is a very very serious situation unfolding and I just pray for all those people that are on that island that they do evacuate uh, today if they haven't already because this is a uh, typhoon to not mess with because this is a very intense typhoon. Even so, it weakens a little bit uh, due to an eye wall replacement cycle. As everything stands right now, based on my data, this remains a catastrophic event right now. So looking at the latest uh, H Wharf model, this is one of my the tools that I like to use to track typhoons or hurricanes or cyclones. So this is a look at the, let's go to our, um, yeah, this is a look at our wind forecast uh, further out. I know it's hard to see, but we're looking at about 140 knots by uh, tonight. When it gets over uh, possibly um, the island there of Guam, the eye itself could have winds that could reach 155, maybe 160 miles an hour, strong enough to do a lot of damage on that island. I know a lot of you uh, are hurricane prone or, or typhoon prone and you're built for typhoons like this, but still 160 mile an hour winds here could really do a lot of damage, all right? And it doesn't take much. So going forward in time here, we can see how the typhoon does look to weaken though, 
but due to current structure changes, the model's not able to pick that up right now. We are expecting this to further strengthen or re-strengthen after the eyewall replacement cycle completes. So anyone living uh, on the northern Philippine island here, as well as perhaps Taiwan, really need to be on the lookout for latest rapid changing updates here on the channel for this typhoon because some models have this getting really close to the northern islands and some models like the h wharf want this um, going to the north of taiwan for a great example of that if we bring up the gfs model we can see and this is close range unfortunately we can see that the system does get kind of close i wish i can actually get another sector here let me bring another one up so here is a typhoon right here. As you know, uh, 916 millibars right there. 916 millibars um, in the next four days, which really illustrates with what I was talking about, that this could really intensify. Now, when does, how close does it get to Taiwan and also for northern portion there for the Philippines remains highly uncertain. We take a look at our 500 millibar steering pattern flow here we can see that players on the field are um, basically this ridge, okay? So this upper level ridge at 500 millibars is the primary steering feature is why this is going to be moving towards the west northwest. But as we go forward in time, there's gonna be another ridge that builds on top of Moar to its north, um, kind of developing off of uh, say Taiwan, also the Japanese islands here. Once this ridge becomes well established, this is actually going to turn more westerly and some of the strongest typhoons, unfortunately, have went further west than what models have projected because when you have a very strong typhoon, the vortex is taller and it's able to feel the 200 millibar winds and the 500 millibar winds net flow uh, of this overall pattern. So by uh, day five here, this is by Saturday or by Sunday, early morning actually by saturday yeah by that would be saturday morning see i, I this is well ahead of, uh of the time zone that i'm in so bear with me it will be sometime saturday and sunday here may 26th through uh, may 27th perhaps through the 28th and we can see that there is the upper level ridge pattern right here uh, at 500 millibars well noted and then as this kind of turns to the north, it will find itself uh, between two ridges, a ridge here and a ridge here. But if we look at the 850 millibar flow chart, we can see that this ridge mostly is more dominant. So the flow is actually, and we got westerly flow underneath this. So the overall net flow is going to push this likely to the north at a rather slow pace. So um, really quickly, I wanted to show you the forecast cone from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. So here is Guam right here. So you can't miss it at all. So the forecast calls us to make landfall uh, by uh, early this morning. Don't pay attention to the 5 p.m. on Tuesday. That's local time for us. You're Wednesday over there. So it would be between about, about 10 in the morning on Wednesday through about 3 to 4 in the afternoon on Wednesday for Guam. Okay, that's for today. So make sure you have your plans in place. When you get up in the morning and watch this video, you're definitely get, uh, need to watch this because we have 160 mile an hour winds as this passes over Guam. Slight weakening of 5 miles an hour is expected, but then it will re-intensify on the other side, perhaps up to 160 miles an hour once it gets into the Philippine Sea. And this is a very, very serious situation, folks. I just hope and pray that you guys can, uh, that you're already evacuating and doing all of that because this is a system to not mess with at all. Dealing with 160 mile an hour winds potentially making landfall. If not already, we're seeing that with Typhoon Mawar at, at this time. Well, that is going to do it with today's update on Moir. I sure hope this video helped you out a lot. If it did, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. Well, that is it for now. Thank you all for watching.